Walsh, Scoville, and I will go ahead and call uh, the uh, EDC regular meeting to order at 6.36 p.m. here. So apologize for that delay. And uh, I think the only thing I have in terms of opening comments is obviously we remain in extraordinary times. Uh, but definitely want to thank uh, the committee that jumped on the uh, emergency uh, business retention program. Uh, Johnny, Michael, Amanda, uh, really hard work over the weekend and in short order to uh, identify the 18 recipients and I think to end up in a very fair and rational uh, allocation of resources to those businesses and so very, very appreciative of, of their efforts and then the support of Brent and Kurt and, and the rest of the city council. So uh, just really thanks to, to you all that did all that uh, heavy lifting on, on uh, getting those grants awarded in, in such a quick fashion and feel really good about uh, making an impact so quickly there. So uh, no further comments from me. Uh, a lot of choppy waters ahead of us, of course, and we'll be monitoring that and figuring out how best to proceed. But uh, with that, any any particular city update, uh, Brent? No, I believe you covered it. Uh, we are closely monitoring our sales tax numbers. Uh, our most recent numbers were from February compared to uh, last year, February, and we were up, however, we didn't see the brunt of any stay at home orders. So we're optimistic, optimistically hopeful that uh, with the businesses that are still operating and seem to be doing pretty decent volumes that we can maintain that sales tax budgeted number. And I believe the rest of the things I need to speak about are listed further down on the agenda. Does anyone have okay. any questions? Okay, uh, director comments, and I think just start there at the top with you, Ronnie. Uh, you're first on the screen. Ah, there we go. Uh, not a whole lot. Just uh, my wife was had a teleconference with her a medical doctor, one of her specialists, UTMB Galveston, and he said they down there are looking for the thing to peak in this area about the 20th of this month. So um, I figure he's pretty much on the inside since he's UTB in Galveston. Um, the other thing is I got uh, talked to uh, Matt Wiggins, the water board president today. Our top 25 water users in the district are not using any water. So there's a significant drop in sales, um, revenue, income revenue for water and sewer for the district. So we're gonna have to make some adjustments that will primarily affect uh, commercial users and it'll be an increase. We haven't approved this yet and it's gonna be on the agenda Monday night. There'll be an increase to commercial uh, users in certain uh, levels. There's different levels and that's gonna be published and uh, we'll see that to try to get us through this. And uh, Matt has also found some other things that is, is gonna help us if people weren't being billed for uh, that are out of district for the correct amounts and so on and so forth. So we've got some things there on the water district side and the sewer plants coming along, but we, we're, uh, that's really, I think about all I have at this point. Great, thank you. Um, you know, I was kind of just curious, I happened to uh, ride my bike by that uh, new multifamily complex that went up in West Kima uh, and just opened. What what was the backstory on that? Was it were they granted uh, water taps or meters uh, from WCID, or were did they well, get did they have water? They have allocated. Uh, I don't recall when they received those, and it might have been a while ago. But there's only there. I think there's what four units there or eight units. This is very small uh, complex. So Got it's it. okay. now we do we do have water and sewer is, is available now basically and uh, coming online. Okay, got it. Uh, Don, any comments? Uh, 
So stand by one. Um, I, I have two things real quick, Charles. One, one, one is Ronnie. Can you can you change your name on your screen to have your whole whole name on there? And same with Don Milbauer. If you right click, that was one of the requirements too. You should have three dots, and you should on your screen, and you should be able to rename your screen to your full name. And then we also just had a person join, which needs to identify yourself. I think it's a phone number. It might be Mike Fonz. 858-699-6992. Yes, it's me. All right, so can you identify yourself with your phone number and your full name, please? Uh, Michael Pond, phone number 858-699-6992. All right, and you're one of the directors on the EDC. Correct. Okay. Um, I unmuted you, so if you can figure out how to mute and unmute yourself, we won't know if you want to talk. So I was going to mute you back. Okay. So where's that button at, Kurt? Is it the video settings? Yeah, if you hover over your screen, there's three dots. Click on that, and it should say uh, video settings, and then you can change your, your name. Uh, video settings. Uh, oh, just, click the, just click the three dots and it says three names, right? Right, the top three. Click the three dots on your screen in your picture. Oh, in my picture? Right now. All the three dots, I see. I get you. Okay. Yeah, so yeah where it rename. says mute and then three dots. So, got it. Click on that and rename yourself. See that. Boom. Thank you, Ronnie. Thank you, Don. Back to you, Charles. Sorry about that. No problem. Uh, Don, do you have any comments? Uh, the only comment I had really had was that uh, once we go through tonight's meeting is that, you know, we'll probably need to hit the pause button on all of this laundry list of items that we have and kind of regroup at some point with the, uh, remaining funds EDC has, even though I know we have a, a whole lot of stuff we need to talk about, but um, that's, it. that's really all I have is that until we have a more clear picture of the financial um, condition that, you know, the EDC and the city is going to be in, which is going to be pretty serious uh, based on tax revenue um, you know, I guess my main concern is, uh, you know, how is the city going to fund, uh, the existence of the, you know, all the services that's provided. I think, uh, good questions. And, uh, uh, you know, the good news is I think on the parking lot and we'll get to that is, I think it looks pretty good. It's clean and serviceable now, and we just want to make sure that we actually have businesses uh, to to use the parking. <laughs> Maybe that that'll be our first priority. Um, so, uh, okay, appreciate that very much. Um, and then it looks like Michael, you're next on the screen. If, if in the it looks like so, if you'll if you have any comments. Michael, you have any comments or you're muted, I think, at the moment. Can't be unmuted. Can you hear me now? Now we can. Yes, you're good. Okay. Okay. I didn't have a way of muting. Um, just a director comments? Yes. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, the only thing I got to say is let y'all know that I've canceled the May 2nd contact, uh, concert with Jerry Diaz, and we're going to try and reschedule it as a second concert the first month that concerts are allowed again. I think that's prudent. I don't know what anybody else thinks, but I, I think it's, it's a solid bet that we're in some sort of lockdown probably through the middle of May and, and likely until the end of May. I don't know if anyone has a different perspective, but it just it's hard to fathom us getting large groups together before then and if then really so 
Right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Johnny, any comments? Uh, most of mine are also on the agenda. Um, but back to the tax income, I guess this latest statement, um, was that from February, this last one that we got in? I didn't do the snapshot. Okay. Yeah, it was 21,326, I think. Yeah, that would be February. Okay, so that, that was up a little bit from last February? Is that what you said, from 2019? Okay. And, uh, yes, sir. I'll, I'll, I'll probably do the snapshot and just email it to everybody in the coming weeks. There's an extra day in February, too. Yeah, that's true. Um, everything else is in the agenda. Okay, thank you. Uh, Thomas, comments? Uh, whatever I need to say uh, is on the agenda. I'm good. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, then uh, we have no unscheduled visitors. Uh, so like then we'll move to the... I'm sorry? I would like to talk as a visitor. Oh, okay. Please do. I'm a visitor. I just want to reiterate on the whole thing on the EDC directors, Mike Pons and Johnny Bolton House and Councilwoman Amanda Fenwick. Uh, thanks for your endless contributions to the city and our local businesses. It's because of the this and that hopefully this helps uh, bridge the gap for our economic recovery for all of our all of the businesses that are here. And then second, uh, just moving forward to iterate what Don was saying, uh, we, we need to be f uh, fugal, frugal with our uh, future spending uh, due to this horrific pandemic COVID-19 that is not only hurting us in CLS, but also the entire world. Uh, let's make sure we are doing the right thing moving forward, meaning we, we may need to uh, actually look at moving concerts or canceling concerts in order to provide different avenues for folks to recover from this, at least for a short while. So just be mindful of that. Even on the city front, uh, myself and Brent, you know, we've, we've frozen all spending moving forward unless it's uh, actually needed for the conduction of, of business. So even though it's budgeted, doesn't mean that we're going to move forward with those, those mm -hmm. items. And that's all I have. No, thank you. That's appropriate. Uh, okay. On the consent agenda, we have the March, 2020 financials, uh, the, uh, March, 2020 check register, the minutes of our last regular meeting on March 10th, the minutes of our emergency meeting on March 24th, uh, oh, and that looks like that was duplicated, so uh, excuse that. I'm not sure how that happened. Um, but anyway, those four items, uh, if I have a motion, uh, could I have a motion to approve uh, the consent agenda as presented? I make a motion to approve the consent agenda as, as presented. Ronnie makes a motion. Do I have a second? Yeah, I'll second that. Okay, the second, seconded by Don. Uh, any discussion? Uh, one question I had, Brent, was uh, it looks like the only thing that we have outstanding relative to uh, the parking lot at this point would be the retainage of just under 12,000. Is that kind of your sense of it? Yeah, as, as far as uh, we've received the last invoice, uh, pay request for approve that with input from the engineers and as far as the end of the project the end of the project the <coughs> official date was April 1st 2020 so that starts our uh, warranty period on it and so again the only <coughs> so really out the, the only I other thing the only other thing you have outstanding would be about uh, uh, probably around twenty thousand dollars for trash cans, and okay. the uh, out, outstanding invoice for the uh, for the bike racks, which is around uh, seven thousand dollars, I think, if I remember correctly. So you've got about thirty thousand that's out there floating around, uh, and couple that with, uh, I guess, the next agenda item, the two hundred forty-one thousand that was um, handed out as part of the the grant program. Got it. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, 
Kurt, do we need, uh, I believe we've had someone join us. Do we need to have them introduce themselves or? Yeah, uh, Barbara Robin, did you join? Can you identify yourself, please? Yeah, this is John Robin and Barbara Robin. We're, we're uh, 311 Blue Point. All right, thank you. Uh -huh. Great, thank you for joining. Um, okay, uh, then uh, next on the agenda, well, I'm far, sorry. Uh, so we had a, uh, a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. And so all in favor by a show of hands, uh, uh, in favor of approving the consent agenda. Okay, I'm, I'm in favor if y'all can hear me. I've lost my view of the screen, so let me, there we go. Ronnie, is that, uh, do I see your, okay. Don? Yeah. Okay. I've got everybody. Like Thomas. Okay. okay. All in, okay. Unanimously approved. Uh, we will move to item six, which is an update on the status of the emergency business retention program. Johnny, if you could kind of talk us through that. Sure. Yeah. Um, like you said, um, it, it went really well. Um, you know, thanks to my pawns and Amanda Fenwick, um, uh, mayor and everyone for jumping on it i think that was the key uh that uh just the speed i think kind of uh impressed everyone that was involved and it sounds like some other cities were also pretty impressed and uh emulated our uh the structure of the grant um almost exactly it seems like um lamarck uh, texas city and uh Rent and kurt y'all probably maybe have heard of others um uh, i'd like to hear what other cities may have um reached out to us but um the way we structured it um is we basically uh, granted two percent of taxable income from 2019 um or annualized uh, 2020 so january and february uh, we capped it off at twenty five thousand dollars and had a, a minimum of five thousand dollars and the, the minimum uh was kind of based off of the lowest rent and utilities and overhead of the of the person with the lowest rent basically for two months so it covered two months of through all the applications the person with the lowest overhead um and then we were kind of looking at around five thousand dollars minimum we also looked at 2500 uh, and realized that that just wasn't enough to cover overhead even for the uh, the person with the lowest uh, we looked at structuring it differently where we had um, higher percentages um, than the 2%. We looked at um, other formulas based off of employees and uh, uh, kind of looked at it and simplified it and, and, and made it just, you know, basically giving people back the 2% that would have gone to local sales tax. Uh, and I think it was just a very fair, simple, um, you know, it made sense. Yeah, no, I think it's. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I question. I, I'm sorry. Who who was that asking the question? Did someone have a question? Okay, sorry. Just uh, some noise there. Uh, no, thank you again. I think uh, it was outstanding and, and well executed and so I think we've made a material impact with 18 businesses and quite a variety and it was uh, interesting to uh, just see uh, you know the people who uh, who really do need assistance at this time uh, just kind of talking about cash availability based on on my rough math as I was looking at it earlier just as uh, since we talked about that we had Net of the $12,000 uh, for the retainage, I was calculating we had 808,000 before the 30,000 that that um, Brent mentioned. So then call that 780, and I keep having in my mind that we've got about a $400,000 set aside for uh, Drawer Road. That may or may not be accurate. Brent, is that is that our number for Drawer? Our commitment. Yeah. 
yes, that is our commitment. And this is Brent Spear. I'll also add to the comments about the uh, the grant program. There was questions about other other municipalities uh, structuring deals. We I also spoke to uh, the city of Galveston, uh, Galveston County Economic Development, the city of Fulcher, uh, city of Seabrook. So uh, all of them were interested in doing similar programs. One thing that they were very quick to recognize was how responsive we were. And that's a, uh, that's a function of our size. Sometimes being small is really good, sometimes uh, not so good. So uh, being small and maneuverable helped us very much. The other thing that they were surprised at was the, the effort to make contact with all affected businesses. So I, I sat down and I called and left messages and tried to talk to people that I had contact information for. Um, it was surprising. I think we garnered a lot of data on some of the businesses in the city that quite frankly, uh, we don't think about a lot of, a lot of times we know they're there and, uh, you know, we drive by and we see the signs and we wonder what do they do? So it was a good opportunity to kind of learn about their business and see how they contribute to the city. And, uh, all the people that I've talked to post grant have been very, very appreciative. So, that's yeah. what I have to add. Yeah, we've had some good feedback and uh, a lot of personal thanks and people thanking, uh, thanking us, which has been really nice. And like you said, I, you know, we just hope it, it helps them um, mainly to snap out of this once things get back going, you know, it'll be a nice kickstart. Um, uh, have you heard anything from Kima's KDC or uh, they, are they in the position to do anything like this? They, no, I've, I've not heard from them. I, was just I think I think I think that their I think that their funds are already allocated to other projects because of the the amount of growth that they have going on. Okay, I had I had people asking uh, that live and work over there, and I I didn't know the answer. And uh, just one last comment, you know, thanks Charles, uh, I mean, thanks for uh, you know coming up with it, and I'm sure everybody's really appreciative. It was quick action, and and it worked out really well. No, and uh, it's interesting. I was just putting away some things in uh, a worksheet that you had given me that were notes from the Texas Economic Development Sales Tax Workshop. I think that you attended, or was that an online meeting or an in-face meeting? But the notes from that, and I, I was looking over them this weekend, and and one of them was talking about the impact of <clears throat> small businesses, sole proprietorships, which is really everyone to whom we we gave a grant. And it says that uh, for uh, six cents of every dollar that's spent at a big box store is retained and recirculated in the community. 20 cents of every dollar in a chain store, but 60 cents of every dollar is retained and circulated from a sole proprietorship. So just a pretty impressive statistic in terms of the, the leverage that you get out of of the grant money that we provided. I mean, it's going to stay pretty close to home. So that's, I think, just speaks to the impact of it. Exactly, yeah. Uh, yeah, Brent, Brent and I that attended that, that meeting, yeah. <clears throat> really good. Um, okay, uh, next item is, is kind of a follow-up and related item and had a little bit of a false start. Uh, was brainstorming with Michael and um, it occurred to me that we have a lot of folks who are not accustomed to navigating the SBA uh, gauntlet and uh, maybe may not be aware of all the programs, notwithstanding you know the things that are posted and they're out there available. If you don't live in that world, it, it just may be you know too much. And so thinking that it might be helpful to have someone that we pay for, uh, to kind of coach and guide tenants, not really to provide, you know, deep um, uh, assistance, but just some kind of high level, here are the programs, you know, don't get too excited if you're in the queue, you know, that's just part of the process, or you need to make sure that you, you get these forms in. We had um, talked about using uh, Cheryl Hunter, the, who handles bookkeeping, and accounting services for the city and EDC. 
but determined that there was likely a conflict there. Um, I, I, I probably I had enthusiasm for kind of making a motion and uh, moving forward on that uh, prior to this, but I'm but I may be indifferent at the moment. So I wanted to open it up. Uh, I, and maybe I need to go ahead and just make a motion. We can get a second just ha to have conversation on it. But uh, the motion is to retain an accountant or a business consultant to provide general guidance to our local businesses seeking assistance through the available COVID-19 federal relief programs. So that's the motion. If I can get a second, then we'll open it up for discussion. I'll second. It was was that you, Don? No, that wasn't me. No. That was Mike Pons. Oh, Michael. Okay, sorry. Uh, okay, seconded by Michael. Uh, so just uh, now, open for discussion. Uh, any comments, thoughts, questions, concerns? I mean, I, again, I'm not. I'm not. Personally uh, Charles, I have a comment. Yeah, I'd like to make a comment. Um, yes. You know, I, I found out about this uh, Southern Smoke Grant Program for people in dire emergencies, you know, uh, employees. And I went and called all of our restaurants and told them about it. And they all pretty much said the same thing. They got a pretty good handle on things. They don't know of anybody that's in real dire need. But they've all talked to their banks or the SBA and uh, it sounds like they all got a pretty good handle on it. Okay. Uh, I, um, talked to the, I talked to the Leaf family and uh, guided them towards the Paytech Paycheck Protection Program. And they are, we're working, their bank, unfortunately, is Amogee, which is not very, um, doing a very, they're not, hadn't been very astute at the beginning of the thing. But they they were going to do the Paycheck Protection Program uh, with their bank, and I didn't talk to anybody else uh, beyond that. Some people are very, uh, you know, like skippers. If they're closed, then they do this plan. Then in eight weeks, if that if they want that to become a grant, they have to pay out the same wages in eight weeks as they were paying out uh, that they got in the grant, or seventy five percent of it. So since they're closed, it doesn't really apply to them. Uh, and I applied for it for our business. Same thing. We had to lay off all the employees. We have no business. Now we've got the grant. We're trying to say, well, wait a minute. This is going to turn into a loan unless we spend the money. But we don't have any business to, to bring the employees back. So we could give them all like a hundred bucks or this, that, and the other. But it's not going to equate to two and a, you know, to two months of or eight weeks of payroll that we had prior to this event. And I also did the SBA loan itself. It's called the EIDL, I think. It's been, uh, I started working on that immediately for our business uh, and I did three, actually did three of them because it was very complex when I started on it. But what happened is they were just overwhelmed. So they simplified the SBA EIDL loan. It's really very, very basic now. And uh, anybody can actually do the paperwork um, so that one is simple. Um, and the bank helps you with the pay, paycheck protection program. Our banker helped us with that as far as what to put in what box. And it's only like a two page application. And once we did, I think a one spreadsheet deal. So they're fairly simple. I think it's more, not so much a helping them with them as getting them, uh, educating them about the availability of the programs. Yeah. No, and I, I think you're right. I've been working with some restaurants, and that was the realization I came to as well, is that uh, on the PPP program, you're right. You kind of get caught in this trap that there's no value in bringing employees back to just stand around. And I mean, that, there is value, I guess, to the employees, but not, uh, not necessarily to the business, which I think just speaks again to why uh, our grant program was, was essential and and not dupli duplicative of anything else that was happening. So, um, and I do think, yeah, so the, my concern had to do with more the, maybe the, the restaurants in particular who may be, uh, not to say they're not as sophisticated, but maybe uh, 
didn't have the same banking relationships as some of the larger businesses, but those that can take advantage of the PPP program, I think, are uh, adequately represented and, and understand how to, how to access that. So having said all of that, I would probably just table this motion. I, I don't know that we need to kill it, but just table it and we can revisit it uh, on down the road if we feel like it's necessary. So. Charles, this That's is okay. Brent. Yes. This is Brent Spear. I just wanted to let you know that the city, uh, <clears throat> Adri's done a very good job of rolling out and, and doing a COVID-19 resource page that's maintained on our website uh, when you find it. I've also done a lot of rollouts through the social media as they pertain not only to public health, but also to business opportunities. So I think that as far as getting the information out there and being able to help, uh, our local businesses, Clear Lake Shores is really out in front in a lot of regards on this. We're, we're out ahead of these other places. So I think we've done a, done a good job and I think the message been, has been heard and they're working on their own. But I just wanted to add yeah. that resources are available. Yeah, no, and I appreciate that. And I think Adri has done a, a fantastic job. I really appreciate the communication out. And uh, yeah, I think we're definitely punching above our weight uh, in that regard. So uh, we'll move on then to uh, the discussion and possible action on the design and installation of the landscaping and the lighting that I know Don's done a lot of work on for the Lee Tract parking lot. And uh, I think we may may comment on that lightly, Don, and, and may, you know, may just table that as well, but it's let you take it. Yeah, so we've got the uh, proposals back from, for the light fixtures, the light poles, um, you know, and the, uh, the generic uh, schematic for a light pole base. Uh, part of the questions that are still lingering out there is going to be costs for the installation and running of the conduits in primary and uh, whether we're crossing the street or boring under it <clears throat> or over it. Uh, and then setting up uh, potentially a separate meter with meter can. Um, so we don't have our arms around all the cost uh, but we do probably have enough to send over to the engineers since they do this quite often and have them uh, put a overall plan together, uh, a plan of action. Uh, so I guess at this point, and I think the more I think about it with all this going on, you know, we thought it was a good idea and it's a life safety issue in the parking area. But the more I think about it, you know, I'm not, I think that's one of the projects that we really ought to kind of move forward on. And part of my thinking is that if it takes a couple of months uh, for us to get this uh, design uh, and then out to bid and then approve for funding, you know, we could have that parking lot lit up, uh, it's April, May, June, uh, say by June, which would really have a pretty big impact out there on the frontage, which would drive, I think, uh, more customers in towards, you know, the businesses that are located and established, you know, around that perimeter. Uh, those are just my thoughts and I'm just talking out loud. So feel free to opine if, if you'd like, but that, 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 that's my thought on the whole deal at this point. Uh, this is Mike Pons, can y'all hear me? Yes. Yeah, um, I want to say that I, I agree with what Don's saying. I think that would be a good idea because we wouldn't have to spend the money until this is over, hopefully. And if it's continuing to go, we can always postpone it. Yeah, I totally agree. 
Yeah. Brent, we have so, I mean, are we... Go ahead, this is, this is Brent Spear. Uh, I had a couple things to add to Don's presentation. He did he did the track down for the light study and the, and the hardware. That's much appreciated. We're trying to figure out how to do the electrical. And we have two existing electrical locations. One is uh, close to Okies. We anticipate that that eventually is going to be expanded and, and that will fill that box and the capabilities of that box. So it's not a good option to uh, go there and try to hook lights into it. The second box that has uh, that is existing and has available space and capacity is located behind skippers and that is an elevated uh, electrical service panel. Uh, that would require a, a distance of uh, underground you know, directional boring, uh, go around some things that are in the ground. Um, potential for damage is pretty, probably much higher than some other options, but uh, that's the second existing. And looking at the site, I believe there is an opportunity to bring down another power source that can be specific to that parking lot with a separate meter. It'll be over by Pro paint and body, and because it's a new service, it's going to have to be elevated even higher than the one at Skippers to match our new uh, development standards uh, because of our, you know, our low elevation. And uh, in talking with Kevin about that, the building official, he thought that maybe that could be made into some type of a. It could be hidden or or camouflage disguised as something else. It could be made into a, like a little elevated house or something, uh, kind of resemble a house. And uh, we can get, get power, I think, to that lot pretty easy by doing that new extension. Uh, the other thing that we would have to do is, is send it out for uh, some bids to figure out what the cost of installation would be. And I think they can handle the concrete work as a, electrical they probably do it with a sub but uh, I think the rest of it's pretty easy and we can probably get started on that if that's a direction you want to go but not pull the trigger until necessary so do we need to authorize any expenditure for engineering and design or just um, you what, may what do you think you, the I if you want to if you want to do a not to exceed, I don't have an idea what engineering would be for that project. I can't imagine it being a whole lot, but uh, um, if it's two or three thousand, maybe three thousand dollars or five thousand dollars, but uh, you know, it's. Uh, I, th I think we can get some of this uh, background stuff done uh, without having it engineered at this point, and maybe just keep that money in the bank for right now. And it doesn't require any action other than for you as a body to say, yeah, keep moving in that direction. Don't spend any money because we're already working on that. So. Well, I think we're, I don't, I don't think we need a motion for that. I'm certain unless somebody objects to continuing to investigate in that way, then we'd say carry on. Well, Anyone I'd else like, have any. By the next meeting though, I'd like to have, you know, come back with a solid proposal about what the next steps are and if we do need to spend money to get a money approved so we don't come back and have this same discussion in 30 days so is that reasonable here's yeah, my thoughts right. my excuse me my, my thoughts are we need to go ahead i think and move uh, uh have a motion to spend three grand 3500 for some engineering because uh it's going to be hard for us to ascertain uh, without an engineer saying, hey, we need, we can give them direction. We want them to hand them the package and say, this is what we're looking at. Here's the photometric, here's the, here's the equipment, Here to, here's where we think power can be obtained from and let them come up with a design in the load calcs and which would give us a nice little package to put out. The, my, my concern is that it, we really want to have that parking lot lit up when ready to go, when everybody's ready to bust loose out of their houses and get out and give them some place to go 
And that would really, I think that's going to be a big draw for us. Uh, the more I think about it, the bigger it, I, I think it's a, a need that uh, we need to hit timing on that uh, instead of kind of dragging it along. Uh, my, I would, my suggestion is, is maybe we could get it lit up by June instead of July or August uh, and take advantage of, you know, the, everybody just, you know, getting released out of this COVID and going out trying to do something normal again. I agree. I make a hey, motion. you want to go ahead and just go I'll ahead, make, Ronnie. I'll make a motion to approve uh, up to 5000 not to exceed $5,000 for Brent to secure the engineering services necessary to move the uh, project to the next level. Do we have a second? I'll second. This is Johnny. Okay. Any uh, any discussion? Thomas, why don't you chime in here? Aren't you some kind of an engineer or something? <laughs> <laughs> I'm all for it. I'm just wondering, you know, when you do this, do you do it just to do the load for those exact lights or do you have a different dimension on the intakes or at least the cabling so that whatever gets built there at the later stage can use that or, or do they have to redo everything? It would just be for those, uh, the lights and being that they're LEDs, it's going to be low. Yeah. Uh, you know, a real low amount of, of voltage pull through the, the, it's more for conduit, line sizing, breaker sizing, how big's the panel, do we need, we're going to put a meter can, obviously HLP needs to hang a transformer up there, full power down to it, and it would be really simple uh, if we used that location that Brett had, had mentioned, so, uh, but that would be it in that area. Now we could also have them size it for some, uh, maybe some landscape lighting that we may end up putting up along the frontage there was, uh, might be some tree up lights or something, but that would be real minimal. Yeah, and it's, it's, so it's very low power. So, you know, it's just right. uh, an extra circuit does so it's not gonna make a big difference. No, nope, not at all. No. <clears throat> okay, uh, there being no further discussion, all in favor, uh, raise your hand, aye. Okay. Uh, Hi. Looks to be, like aye. Pause. Looks to be So, uh, okay, yes. Motion passes. Okay. Uh, Thomas, uh, if you want to update us on your investigation uh, for uh, fiber-based internet service, yeah. kind of where, where first you are on that. Yeah, let me just first say that I totally agree with Don that we need to be frugal and we don't need to, this is not the time to enter into these big, uh, you know, several hundred thousand dollar projects. However, what we are doing at the moment, it doesn't really cost us anything. Uh, we haven't uh, taken on any expenditure whatsoever. And it's maybe a good time to start, you know, doing this leg legwork. We can always make a decision later on. Now, in that regard, um, I'm talking to um, a couple of different consultants just to get a, you know, narrow the scope of what we, because we need to define the scope of what we, what we want out of it. <clears throat> as, far, I mean, as far as a consultant to guide us, you know, we need to clarify what we are looking for. And in that regard, the one of them has offered to just, uh, for now anyway, for your charge, uh, reach out to another couple of uh, companies that has fiber that goes along 2094 right out here. So at least we know whether or not they have an interest to offer at all, or if we are stuck with one option. And if we're stuck with one option, then it becomes a more of a uh, task of going through that proposal to see if it's reasonable or if we just bid it. Now, uh, we've also looked at um, the par in, everything in parallel with um, with Adri to do a little write up in the Islander to kind of get the uh, the excitement level up a little bit that maybe now is not such a bad time to put that out there because everything now is doom and gloom and coronavirus and you know hardly any good news so maybe maybe this will be a little bit different maybe you could help and she's made up a page and a half, two pages of um, an article for the Islander. It just says, it doesn't say anything about how much money it is. It doesn't say anything about that we need a certain amount of people to subscribe to it, but it just lays out what it's all about, that we're looking into it. Just create some 
interest and then they can come with questions and you know try uh, you know they want to praise it that's good and if they want to slaughter it that's you know we need to hear that too <laughs> that's good too yes I, and no you're right i mean everybody's fully sensitized to uh, the importance of of internet connectivity right now so it's probably a good time to at least talk about it uh and yep. we can always decide what we do with it so yeah. maybe charles can have no a action video next time too <laughs> what's that yeah, if we had that, maybe you'd have a video too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes, I, I, this is a hardware problem at the office. I'm not sure what what happened. Uh, I was trying to get one of those fancy backgrounds like Brent and and the mayor have, and I think I jacked up my camera system completely. Chroma Cam uh, let me down here. Um, so I guess there's no action unless somebody has an objection to putting that article out. If somebody wants to see it, I, we can send it around. Uh, Thomas, do you mind just dis distributing it? And I can do that. I mean, if anybody objects to it going out, just let us know. But otherwise, it'll it'll go out here in the next couple of days, or we'll be submitted to the island. Yeah. What's I that? I just had one comment on it, just uh, just for the uh, EDC board to think about. Um, sometimes uh, cities will choose to use an outside source to uh, accompany what you're trying to do so they could put together the circular so it's worded properly. I'm not, I'm not a professional in doing that, so I wouldn't want to be in charge of that. I've been involved with a lot of stuff with like the City of Leak City and they've had, you know, a lot of uh, parks and swimming pools and other type activities fail just because they tried to do it in-house. And it's just something for y'all to consider that maybe we should use a professional service to uh, to put that out um, for uh, actual distribution and, and survey. Like Why is council? It's like a bond election. They they use professionals to promote the information about what the bond's going to include. I don't know if we're that far along yet or not, especially since yeah. we're not going to spend the money at this time anyway. So. This is more of an inform information, uh, inf informative article. That's all it is mm -hmm. it's that we're looking at something because mm -hmm. when everybody today is concerned about the internet, right? More so than normal. I guess, uh, I guess to some extent we're saying if it, if it were to fail miserably or the reaction was terribly negative, none of us are, are so invested in it that we'd be heartbroken over it. I mean, we're really trying to get some feedback. So is that accurate? Yep. I mean, if, if it's something the community wants to do, we'll get behind it. If it's not, we'll move on to something else. So is kind of my opinion. So, uh, so with that, Thomas, do you want to, do you want to try to utilize someone to craft a, uh, more, professionally drafted uh, notice or just let it let it rip I mean, I'm, I'm happy to let it rip but uh, maybe, how about I send it out and um, it send it around and we'll get everybody's reactions to it yeah, yeah because the thing the thing is to make the next island or the deadline is tomorrow <laughs> uh, now we can oh, no 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 send it out tonight. Them. yeah no I, I'll send it out now when we fit uh, to you guys after we finish the meeting and uh, it, no pressure. Consensus is that we. <laughs> no problem. Um, <laughs> if consensus is that we get a professional to do it, um, I think Average has done a great job. But if you say consensus is that we need to do it better, we can do that, or we can engage somebody at the later stage. Yeah, I say. I say later stage. Well, let's just get a, uh, just read it when you get it, and just say, yeah, looks good, or uh, maybe tap the brakes. Let's let's talk about this. Yeah. I mean, Okay. okay. Moving on, uh, Joe's not with us tonight, so we'll skip over the Island Tree Replacement Program. Uh, and next up is Ronnie's uh, discussion and possible action on the installation of a new fence between propane and body and the Lee Track parking lot. And then really in tandem with that would be maybe the removal and possible replacement of the chain link fence between Skippers and the Farmer's Market parking lot. Mm -hmm. The, uh, Ronnie, if you go, down, look, go down and look at the parking lot. It's not only by propane body, it's all the way down by the school. So the whole east side of our parking lot should have a uh, fence here, a six foot fence in my opinion, and a really nice 
nice one uh, that would be, uh, you know, architecturally attractive, not just the simplest fence we could build. But uh, I see one with horizontal uh, slats and then a cap. And that, and then as it comes up by Pro Paint and Body Shop, it would drop down to a lower level because that way it could still be built up out to whatever the uh, allowances are under our code, but it would be a, a lower fence so people could see across through there. And that's though not only would it hide all that crap back there that is showing up behind the Paint and Body Shop and the school, but it would also be a great place for us to place temporary banners for any events we're having. So if we were having a crawfish festival, it could be on there or whatever. Uh, and I think this is something that's going to be relatively inexpensive and that what we really just need to do is to tonight is to ask uh, Brent to get a quote on it and uh, with a, a, a fence that's well designed, it will be a total blinding fence for the other side there and look good uh, for the part of the, you know, almost part of the parking lot landscape project. Thirty thirty six dollars a foot. Okay, thirty six dollars. That is is that the number now for a good looking fence? That's what we're paying, whether it's metal or wood. Really? Okay. Yeah. Wow. How's that? How many feet is that there? I have a plaid in my computer, but I don't have to go get to it. I this is Brent. I believe it's about a hundred and ninety two hundred feet. So, so 200 foot would be 70, $200. Plus, yes, between seven and 8,000. Okay. And that's if it's, that's if it's wood. If you want to go vinyl, then you can. Oh yeah, that'd be a lot more. Dub, double and a half it yep. for vinyl. Okay. So we, I guess we need, do we need to discuss what material you guys think, you know, white vinyl is nice, but. It's going to be there as long, it won't, that fence will be there until we tear it down. I can tell you that'll be 15, 20, 30 years. So. Well, does it need to be approved by the committee for the town center? Mm, no, I don't think that's not a building, but, uh, you know. Ronnie, I think it I think should it be wood, quite frankly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, there's a and fence there now. It's just replacing an existing fence. We tear down the old fence, so it's not anything new. So it's really. No, I agree. Really I mean, I. Yeah, I think uh, a wood fence is, has a little more organic feel to it. That would, yeah. yeah. The white vinyl would be too much, I think. So but, do, we, uh, do we need to have a motion to have Brent uh, get some cost estimates? Or do we need to give him do a motion to have him go forward, uh, not to exceed amount of dollars? I'd love to see a design and the final price. I think if we just say get a get a design and a price, and we can have a quick motion to do that, and then we okay. can come back and approve it. What do you say, Brent? Okay. All right. Then I make a motion uh, to uh, allow. Brent or to request Brent seek a design and a price for a fence to cover the entire east side of the parking lot from Aspen all the way up to uh, 2094. Okay, uh, we have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second it. On seconds. Any further discussion? I was thinking, do we roll that into the whole landscaping thing? But then that's going to get we're going to get all tangled up, and that's going to take a while and. Keep it separate. Yeah, could be a more immediate impact. So, I agree. Uh, all in favor, uh, show of hands. Mike okay. Pound showing his hand. Okay. Yeah, I forgot about you, Mike. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, motion passes unanimously. Okay. Uh, then next, Ronnie. Similar conversation regarding the. Skipper's uh, chain link fence. Well, uh, that they put that fence up, you know, b before they got a permit, which is, I guess, irrelevant now. And then Jack gave him a permit, and it's not allowed. Uh, that type of fence is not allowed in the town center, technically. 
Uh, it's there now and they, they did it for a reason because the farmer's market was very successful when it opened and they had vendors parking back in their trucks up in their parking lot on the east side of their parking lot that adjoined the farmer's market parking lot and unloading their produce and goods and things in there. So they had, they're not very uh, hmm, community type oriented people. So now that they've received this uh, wonderful gift of a grant, I think it would be time to either remove that fence uh, totally or replace it with a, a more of a decorative wrought iron fence along there. I don't know what the purpose of a fence is in that area personally, but uh, people have to walk, a lot of people park from their restaurant park and walk around there. So, you know, they, we would need a gate um, at the back at least if we do it, but I just like to see the fence gone. It is their fence though. It is an eyesore. I think it's a yeah, I think we can have that conversation with them. Uh, I do, and every story has two sides. And I was talking with Kim on the other day, and and he was kind of expressing some frustrations that date back to that era, uh, <laughs> and whether they were misunderstandings or, you know, just that's the way it was. Right. Uh, I don't know if they were not so community minded as as they felt like the, you know, the city wasn't really on their side either. So right. where, wherever the truth is, that was their perception and it kind of got locked in right. 10, 12 years ago. And so I think if, if we had that conversation with them, then they, and we agreed to remove it, pay for the cost of removal and clean it up. And right. uh, then we might even landscape. I'll, landscape I'll be it. happy to just have that conversation with Kimon and, and see what his yeah. thoughts are. Yeah, they were, so, we were serving food out there in competition with them. We served breakfast and stuff there at that time. And it wasn't, but they were direct, direct from competition with those guys. So, I mean, I, I see what, I see where they're coming from. Yeah. I mean, I was looking at that side of the building and there's some, I, I would really love to do some murals and, and something interesting. And, the, you know, they've got a nice side of that building. If you took that fence down and did a nice little mural, it could be a great pop for skippers and for the city. Similarly, uh, I was standing at uh, Angel's uh, getting gas last night and looking across the street at Aspen's and, and I worry that we're gonna have a very attractive fence on the right side, but then we've got a two-story eyesore there that, you know, that's really our entrance. I mean, it's, we've, we've gotta do something on that. So, uh, but anyway, I don't know that there's a motion on this necessarily. I'll just have that conversation and We'll see where it goes. Great. So. Charles, can I make a comment? Yes, please. I spoke with Vincent about the prospect of, instead of just painting the building, doing a mural, and he was open to that. Awesome. Okay. So, uh, I, maybe he was going to paint the building anyway, but he said, you know, the mural would be fine, and it might be a, th might be a possible theme that he, he might be able to tie in with his interior. Maybe we talk to Adri about uh, how to source an artist for that and mm. kind of put a proposal together we can bring back in. I've seen some other cities actually put out a proposal and had an artist, you know, different artists um, apply to be the artist that did the mural. And of course they were well paid when they did it. And they gave some, I don't know if they gave the actual designs or showed maybe what their work had been in other places, but there's mural artists that do that. We can, might check, I know Friendswood has done one recently in other cities and we can probably check it online. Okay. I'll well, also I spoke with Amy Lynn at Soul Freak about who did hers and she knows two mural artists and she's going to get quotes from them. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, I was going to suggest, I was going to suggest reaching out to them. That's another good um, a good place to get good information. <laughs> and I'm also hoping uh, related to that too that this grant will kind of help some cohesiveness between the all the different businesses in the city too. So maybe we can uh, start working together and, you know, like I said, get some cohesions. In there, so. Yeah, no, I think you're right. <clears throat> okay, uh, there being no further new business, uh, we shall adjourn the, uh, uh, the meeting. <laughs>